Hey everyone, this is part two of our blending problems example. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at a unique blending problem here called oil company. Imagine a company that has three different ingredients on hand, ingredient A, B, and C. They each have a cost per gallon mixing losses and an amount available. Uh, what these mixing losses mean is this is how much is lost whenever we mix these together. Okay? Uh, so they can be blended to form one of two blends. Let's see, blend one has a demand of 2,000 gallons and is worth $5 revenue per gallon. Blend two has this. Uh, blend one and blend two also have some blending constraints. They have to be at most and at least certain percentages of ingredient A and ingredient B. And it is our job to optimize the profits. And in this case, all we can really optimize is revenue because that's all the information we're given. So you'll see over here, I've already put all this information here. We have our mixing losses, and I always look for the amount remaining as well, so that's just one minus our loss. Note that I do have all these cells formatted as percentages, so I, all my math is correct. Uh, I also have this amount available right here, which lets me know how many um, units of this I have available. So the decision I have to make here is how much of each item goes into each blend. So I have blend one and I have blend two. I'm gonna go ahead and make these my decision cells, my changing variables. A little thicker there. <clears throat> uh, and then we have some good things that we can look at. We have our totals on both sides, right? So how much of each ingredient we've used, we know this. That's just a sum, we're gonna sum up that row to give us the total amount of each type used. Uh, that has to be less than or equal to the amount available. So I'm actually gonna do this down here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut and paste that because uh, it's a good way to do this, nice and quick. This has to be less than or equal to. I'll go ahead and do that there. And I'll reformat that so it looks well, or it looks nice. Uh, also, we wanna know how much of each blend we've created. Now, normally we would just sum this up. We would say, well, how much blend do I have? Well, I mix so much of A, B, and C, and I end up with that much of blend. But in this case, it's not true because we have these mixing losses. So what we're actually gonna do is take the sum product of how much of each product we mix in, how much of each ingredient, with the amount remaining once you mix it. Well, why is that? Well, if I use one unit of ingredient A, I only have 95% of it left. So I have to mod multiply that one unit by 95% and get 0.95 units and add those up. Oh, this is what happens when you don't pay properly. Some product, there we go. And now we can format all these as numbers. Okay, so we have those constraints met right there. Uh, very easy to see, cost per gallon, all those kind of things. Uh, now we have to work out our specifications. Okay, so we have specifications on each blend. So uh, let's start here with blend one. I'm actually gonna take that, I'm gonna shift it over to the right so it looks good. Uh, and I am gonna go right here and we say blend one has a demand. Oh, we missed our demand, so let's do that first. Demand is meter beat, so cancel that center these up and blend one has a demand of two one two three three one two three two thousand three thousand we're going to go ahead in here we're going to format our cells appropriately get that nice border going also get the fill that's appropriate since that's given information uh, we can get that that way and there we go okay maybe center them make them look nice now that we have that we can move on to our actual specifications here so blend one we know Blend one must be at most 30% A. So what I'm gonna do here is say this. And B is at least. Okay, well how much of all these? Well, I have 30% and I have 60%. Okay, so those are formatted as percentages already because we typed them in that way. Excel is good like that. So we'll put that given information down. I knew I picked the one that was too dark. Okay, so we have blend one at least at most. And we also have blend two. 
We're going to give that the same formatting here. Blend2 is no less than, A will be no less than, B no more than, <clears throat> and at most for C. And the numbers that we're looking for there are 60%, 25%, and 10%. Nope, not one, 10. We're gonna go ahead and give those the same formatting. Give them our nice blue outline with our background fill, okay? Now we have to satisfy these here. We need some quantity and some total. So what we wanna do is we wanna compare the actual quantity to the total of each one there. Now the first thing I want you to take a look at are these different constraints. At most means no more than, which is less than or equal to. At least means meter beat. No less than, right? If I can be no less than, I have to be greater than or equal to. No more than, I have to be less than or equal to. Um, and at most, I also have to be less than or equal to, okay? So the question becomes, what does this look like? Right? What does this look like? Right? So if this is going to be less than or equal to 30%, this is going to be blend one, well, 30% times what? The total amount made. So we're going to take that times the total amount made here. We'll actually lock that. Uh, so we can do this one. And this is being greater than, right? So this is, oh, sorry, I think I looked at the wrong column here. Blend one and then we bring it down, 60% of blend one, right? So no more, no less. And this is gonna be the same thing here, 60% times the amount of blend two made. Make sure this is all correct. Lock that for dragging, and we go straight down. Okay, so we have this total and we have our quantity. All right, so let's look at our quantity. Well, how much A is in blend one? Well, that equals how much we put in times how much I have left, because that's how much is actually ending up in there. The same for this, B is how much I put in times how much remains when I mix B. We have the same thing here for blend two, how much I put in multiplied by how much remains all the way down, okay? So you'll see if I put one unit of there, uh, of ingredient A into blend one, I end up with 0.95 units, okay? Uh, well, how much of ingredient A do I have? I have 0.95, which technically has to be less than or equal to 0.29, okay? Because that is 30% of this. So we are good there. Um, but you also see here, B, well, we're not good here. So this is gonna be a, a difficult problem to solve. Okay, the next thing that we wanna see here, uh, we have to calculate two things. We have cost, we have revenue, and we have profit. Profit is actually going to be our objective. So we wanna go ahead and give that a nice border. Profit is just revenue minus cost. Okay, this is all gonna be in dollars and cents. Well, my cost is pretty straightforward. It's the cost per gallon that I'm mixing here with the total amount of gallons that I made. And in terms of revenue, well, I have a amount in here somewhere that says, right, three gigs, da 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 da. Uh, so our revenue per gallon, I think is just $5. We have a cost per gallon and we also have a revenue per gallon. We're gonna make our revenue per gallon $5. So for blend one and blend two, I'm gonna drop a line in here. The revenue per gallon is just gonna be $5. Uh, well, $5, let's make this $8. We'll go ahead and fill that appropriately, add the appropriate border to it. Right. 
So we have our revenue in there as well. We'll shift our cells down. Well, I want to shift those down, but I'm going to let that be for the moment. So our revenue is the sum product of the revenue and the total that we end up making. We're going to assume we can sell everything that we make. Uh, so now we should be in pretty good shape. We should have everything laid out. Uh, these are the most tenuous part of this problem, and so is this loss. This is tricky. So let's go in here. Let's go to Solver. We are going to change these cells. We want to maximize our profit. Now we have some constraints. This must be less than or equal to. The amount used must be less than or equal to the amount available. The amount I meet must be greater than or equal to my demand. Okay. This must be less than or equal to this. This must be greater than or equal to this. This must be greater than or equal to this. And these quantities must be less than or equal to these values. Now you see we have an awful lot of constraints in here this time. Uh, they're not exactly the same next to each other. So you have to be careful when you're entering these to make sure you work through everything very clearly. So let's maximize our profit and see what happens. Let Solver work here. You'll see this problem is a little harder. Uh-oh, Solver could not find a feasible solution. So what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is go over our model to see what's going on. Okay, so let's go double check everything here. Uh, these formulas look like they're okay. Oop, that doesn't look like it's okay now. I broke it. So let's drag this down. That looks okay. Oh man, I'm missing a formula. I don't know how that happened, but let's put that back in. I'm guessing that that was our problem here. So let's go back to Solver. Uh, go in here, make sure this is all good. D19, let's see what this is right there. Okay, that one is good. Uh, I wanna make sure this is in here. So we'll look at B11 through C11. Here we go. Let's make sure that's all good, greater than or equal to that. Okay, so let's try solving this again. So we still have this unbounded solution here. So what are we going to do? We have to look through this. We've checked our formulas. These all formulas are looking rather correct. Uh, so I think the issue here is that we have an unbounded problem. Our constraints are not bounding our, binding our problem correctly. Uh, these less than or equal to should probably be okay. These are pretty rote specifications. So the thing that I actually want to do, uh, which I'm going to try here, is in terms of our demand. I'm guessing that because the demand is greater than or equal to, uh, that we have a lot of room to do some things and it may be throwing the results off. So let's change these to equality constraints. So we're going to go back into our solver and change this one. You'll see I've actually already changed it here equal to this. And let's see what happens when we solve now. Solver could still not find a feasible solution. All right, so let's see what's happening here. Uh, we'll go into solve. Okay, Solver found a solution that time. So what does this tell us about Excel and about Solver? Well, to be honest, it's gonna shake your confidence a little bit because these products are not perfect. Uh, we are using the free add-in and it is definitely not the professional add-in. Uh, these are spreadsheet models and we can work with them and we can make them fairly accurate, um, but I'll let you in on some little secrets. Excel doesn't do math perfectly either and there's some very technical reasons for that. In the real world, when we're building these models and stuff, Excel is wonderful for small formulations. It is wonderful for building initial models and evaluating things. But if you're gonna do this professionally, you should be using larger, more robust optimization tools like Gurobi or Cplex. So here is our blending problem. You've learned some things about this blending problem. You've learned some things about Excel and we should be good to go.